part of the Mid Peninsula Boys and Girls Club. I really like getting to know new people from all across the country and even the world. And I really like knowing what their experiences with their clubs were and uh, how we got to compare them with ours. Yeah, I think a big difficulty we faced though was because we were only a group of four, including our advisor, it was kind of hard to match the dynamic of the conference because a lot of these clubs had like about 20 members in their Keystone groups. So it was kind of hard to make friends at first and it's also tough to try and get the most out of the conference since we were pretty small. I really liked how because it was a small group, it helped us bond more as a Keystone group. Sure. And I really enjoyed our workshops. What we had to do to get here, it took a lot of planning and hard work and a lot of trial and error because our preparation, especially for the workshop, which was kind of like our biggest goal throughout the conference, uh, we had to do a lot of trial and error through hosting like mini workshops at our own club. So for example, when we would have to do um, like the Inspire Ed activities and the activities that targeted emotional intelligence, it was hard for us to kind of coordinate and try and really make an impact in our own club before trying to go on like a national level at the conference. Yeah, and like as Isabella said, everything that we've done before the, uh, the conference uh, was in preparation for the conference. Everything we did, uh, for example, the education symposium and Smart Girls, for everything we had to find a way to sort of incorporate some sort of preparation for the conference so that we would have those skills and be ready. Our workshop was called You a Keystoner and it focused on building your legacy in your club. So what we did was we helped Keystoners focus on the good things and bad things in their club. Yeah, we also helped them brainstorm ideas on how to fix the bad things in their clubs so that when they went back to their clubs they had something to share with the rest of the club as to how they could make their environment better. Yeah, it was cool because we got to incorporate some really cool activities as a part of it. Um, some of it included, uh, what was the card game? It was the one with the cards. Bigger picture. It, yeah, like bigger picture, like more conceptual activities. But we also mixed that with more of like the technical things like planning out um, how you could improve like a certain weakness or a threat in your club. So I think that was cool for us to be able to do just to try and try out like a, a unique learning style that mixed all these different methods. For me, I was extremely nervous before the workshop. I had to go to the bathroom and <laughs> I kind of gave myself a pep talk that like it was going to be fine. It would only be about two hours and then it would just, it would be done. Whatever happened, happened. You just had to try your best and that's what we did and it came out really, really good. I was definitely super nervous. I, in the very beginning, I like couldn't believe how little time had passed. So like I would constantly look at my phone to check how much was left, like how much time was left, and it was like we were only five minutes in. So <laughs> I was definitely super nervous, but when I started focusing more on the actual activities and not what they would think of me, I like got more confident and I actually enjoyed it. So. For me, I was really intimidated. Because again, it was our first time at the conference, so you know it's hard to not be nervous when you're presenting in front of people who have been going for years. And for us, it's our first time, so there's like that weird dynamic where we're newcomers and it's almost like we're telling them what to do. So I was kind of scared, honestly, to have that, that weird retaliation from people who you know, saw us as like these newcomers and, and didn't really want to take us seriously. And I think we did struggle with that throughout the workshop. You know, there were definitely people who were checking out, um, who were not interested in what we had to say, and for us it was frustrating because it's like, you know, why did you come here to this workshop if you didn't want to be engaged? But at the same time, you know, you just have to do your best with the kind of people that want to learn from you. And the fact that they're there, I think that that kind of helped us be a lot calmer, knowing that they're just trying to get something out of it. I knew that a lot of the Keystoners there were older than me um, and I wasn't sure how older kids would react to younger kids trying to 
teach them something that they didn't know. I wasn't sure if they would be open to something new like that. Yeah, that was definitely hard to try and manage because I think also when the people in the workshop found out that <laughs> there were two sophomores who were pretty much running the entire show, I was just hoping to try and support them where I can. Uh, I think that definitely made people in the room realize like, oh shoot, you know, just because we're at this conference doesn't mean that we know everything just because we're older we know everything. So it did help us gain a lot more confidence that carried on through the rest of the, of, um, the conference because we were like, okay, we're capable of trying to make an impact on people uh, regardless of where they're from, how old they are, and the kind of impact that they're already making on their club. Peer to peer teaching, I guess. Right? Is it? Okay, oh, whatever. Mm. Um, like teaching peer to peer was definitely difficult because I feel like it took us a while for them to take us seriously, kind of. Like, we really had to demand their attention for them to really focus on what we were trying to say, but I'm glad that we got there eventually. Yeah. That's kind of hard to answer because I don't think we'll really see the effects of the impact on the workshop until maybe when we get older and start doing more presentations. Because I think, you know, once we reach that point where you know, whether we're, they're presenting for like their senior project or I'm doing like a thesis in college, I'm gonna think back to that moment and be like, oh, I remember when I was struggling to get people's attention and then try and improve on that facet. So I think it's kind of hard to tell the impact, but something that we did see happen in the short term, or something that happened really quickly, I guess, was our confidence when it came to speaking in front of people especially those who are our age, because I think that's harder, honestly, to speak to your own age demographic than versus going older or younger, because then you're kind of at the same level, you're at the same stage of your life, it's kind of weird for someone to establish like authority over another when you're both like teenagers. So for that, I would say, yeah, it was just, it was a good confidence booster for us that we'll definitely see in the long term. <clears throat> what I learned about myself is that the nervousness only lasts before yeah. you actually get up there and start talking to them because when you're talking to them it feels sort of like you're having a conversation with them and not like talking at them. You feel like they are taking in your ideas and they're giving you feedback as you progress throughout the workshop. So for me also confidence was definitely something that I learned about myself. It made me realize how capable that I was. Because definitely before, I didn't think we were going to do all that great. I thought it was going to be like an okay yeah. workshop, you know, we are just there to do what we had to do. But we definitely did so much better than I thought we would, so that definitely boosted my confidence. I think the hardest part for me, at least, was more networking with people our own age. I feel like we were definitely able to talk to those that were older, you know, like national and all those people, like, you know, that was fine, but it was more when it came to interacting with different clubs that we just didn't want to overstep anything. We are kind of really conscious about everything, so that was the hardest part for me. Yeah, me too. I found it really hard to kind of make friends because, as we had said earlier, a lot of the groups came with more than 10 people, maybe even 20, and we were only four people, including our advisor. Yay! So it was hard for them to sort of let us in and open up a spot for us in their group. So we really had to like push our way in there in order to be able to <coughs> make new connections with people. Yeah, that goes along with the intimidation that we were talking about earlier. Um, it was also difficult to I guess going off of their point, I'd say that one of the reasons that it was difficult to try and connect with other clubs was because they were so from so far away. And I think because of that, it made it really hard to find any sort of common ground. Um, like for example, when we got to see like our neighboring organization there, it was easy to connect with them because you know they're from the same areas, we're familiar with their schools. A lot of us are doing the same things and you know we like the same sports team. So you already have so much common ground with the people, with the clubs that are around you. For us trying to connect to 
like the military bases and ones from across the country, it made it hard to make friends because there's really nothing that that you have in common with them except for Keystone. And you know, sometimes you don't always want to talk about Keystone too. So that kind of contributed to the isolated um, like environment that we kind of felt between us because we were only depending on each other for the most part. Like we could always rely on each other for that. But that made how we interacted with other clubs um, really difficult. I would for sure go again because I think it's a great way to like showcase and show off what we've been doing throughout the year and maybe inspire other clubs to sort of get involved with, get more involved with their clubs and try and see what they can improve and how they can do that. I definitely agree with what Tanya said. It was, I feel like it's a great opportunity for clubs to learn off each other and from different sources also from the outside. It's just, I think it's a very educational event and even taking all that like aside the bond that you guys create throughout mm -hmm. your guys's club sure. going somewhere anywhere even when we went to facebook which was down the street really we bonded so much more like being able to go anywhere with your guys's club is definitely not really a team bonding thing but we definitely definitely closer. yeah it definitely like you bond so much more with the person you're traveling with so Oh, it was yeah. our first. Absolutely, we got so much closer. Um, yeah, honestly, nothing can really bring your team closer until you travel together. Yeah. And I think that that was something that we really exemplified because I'm sure all of us had experiences or moments where we were frustrated with each other. Like it was definitely there. For sure. For sure. <laughs> For <laughs> sure. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like you need those experiences to bring you guys closer because now you know what the other person's weaknesses are. And I think that carries on into like your future Keystone work and also um, how you guys will become closer in the long run, especially as you become like club alumni. For us, I think all of us would definitely agree that we would go again because the experiences that we had that brought us closer together and allowed us to showcase the things that we've done, it honestly, it made the conference so much worth it because we felt like we contributed a lot to the Keystone community, but at the same time, we were given this opportunity to like become a lot closer and like improve ourselves. Bye, thanks for watching.